So if you take too much of a bulky weight, it's just going to be like, oh, I can't do it. And you're not going to be hitting all the different parts that you need to hit. And this is the same with the shoulder press. Now, I do understand it because there's so many articles out there that say, oh, when you do a shoulder press, you just need to go parallel and that's fine. Why? Go below parallel. Go down here. Simon the Lord Hell here. Thank you very much for joining me as always. And that's right. Today, we're talking about these bad boys. Ow, I actually hurt. Deltoid shoulders. And the reason I wanted to talk about deltoid shoulders is because when it comes to your back or your arms or your chest or even legs to a, to a certain extent, I think there's a lot of focus on those things for obvious reasons. And sometimes the shoulders do get ignored because people go, oh, just change your chest and that will, you know, benefit your shoulders as well, which is true. But then you get a lot of people saying, oh, I don't like the way my deltoids look. I don't like this and that and so on. So I thought we would put together a little video and try and fix it because this is indeed seven reasons you're your shoulders aren't growing. Number seven is that you're ignoring them without realizing it. Now, some people do have a very specific shoulder day. Thumbs up to you, but you don't have to have this. And what I think people fall into, and I did this for a long time, the pattern, is if you're doing a push-pull legs rest, push-pull legs routine, my favorite routine, thumbs up to everyone that messages me and says, hey, Simon, I started doing this, and it was a massive benefit. Because you like working the chest and because of the way muscles work, is you start with your chest on push day, then you do shoulders, then you do triceps, right? People rarely go in different orders. But one thing thing you should absolutely do here and there is switch it around. I mean, you could even start with triceps if you wanted to, but again, they really do get a kicking if you're doing shoulders and pectorials. But if you actually think your chest is looking all right, but your deltoids aren't, just start with shoulders. And I know that sounds like the most obvious advice ever, but I went over a decade lifting doing the push-pull legs thing when all of a sudden I went, wait a minute, why don't I just do my shoulders first? Now, it does mean when you get to your chest workout, you may be a little bit weaker because these will be fatigued already, but that's not a problem. Like, you never think the other way around. No one chains their chest and goes, oh man, I've got the shoulders and I can't lift as much. You just do it because once again, we are all obsessed with our pectorials and trying to get them to bounce. I get it. It's a wonderful trick to throw off at parties, but this is absolutely something that I would do. And if you are just doing a uh, I don't know. Any basically, do not leave them to the end of your workout, right? And there's studies out there as well that obviously show that the muscles you work at the start of your workout are going to achieve better muscle synthesis and progress. Because of course they will. You're doing them first. You are utilizing that energy. So keep that in mind. And if you really want those cap Dell toys that people look at and go, oh my gosh, I look great in t-shirts, just prioritize them for a little while. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Going to the gym, the fitness of Palace of Love is for life. You've got plenty of time. Number six is you have an awful range of motion. And we are going to talk about two exercises, these specific here. And we're going to start with the lateral raise. Now, make sure there's a video on the screen. Hopefully, I can find one of me doing lateral raises. And there's many ways to do the lateral raise. You can do that one where you kind of hold your hands out a little bit. Or you can do it like you do on a lateral raise machine, right? Where you lock your elbows and you kind of come up like that. Like you're trying to fly like a pterodactyl. But either way, what you see people doing is just... And we're going to get to this later on too. They grab really heavy weights. And rather... I'm going to go out the screen here, but it doesn't matter. Rather than go up to like... Like this, we are actually sort of, you know, instigating those Dell toys. They do this, right? What is that? That is trying to wave at an old woman saying, oh no, you're on the road or something like that. Or you're trying to be a penguin, right? That's not good. Do not prioritize weight over form when it comes to shoulders. Because think about it anyway, you're already fighting gravity because you've got to come up here. So if you take too much of a bulky weight, it's just going to be like, oh, I can't do it. And you're not going to be hitting all the different parts that you need to hit. And this is the same with the shoulder press. Now, I do understand it because there's so many articles out there that say, oh, when you do a shoulder press, you just need to go parallel and that's fine. Why? Go below parallel. Go down here. Just try it. Find a lightweight today or the next time you do shoulders and do it when you come to here. Ensure you're getting an okay workout. But when you get to here, holy crud, you have to push so much harder from the lower part of your deltoid. So that's what you should be doing, right? It absolutely stands to reason. Now, always take care of yourself first. If you get any pain in that region, it doesn't matter. You want to be healthy enough to go to the fitness palace of love. But this is the things that I see people doing the most, right? They kind of just throw weights around. They'll go on the bench press and there'll be like a side scientific experiment. Like I have precision eyes. I must do this exactly how it must be done because I need a big chest. But when it comes to shoulders, it's like, ah, oh, who cares? Let's just dance on down. So give it a go. Again, start with lightweight, build up, but make sure you're doing those lateral raises right. And make sure you're doing those shoulder presses right. And if you really need somebody to show you, there are loads of good uh, examples on Google. If you're not sure, check the comments or double check it with something else. Eventually, you're going to find your way. Number five is that you're more concerned about traps. That's right. People will go in the gym and they'll do their shrugs, they do their barbell shrugs, and they do their dumbbell shrugs, and they do their machine shrugs. They'll get their plate shrugs, and they'll shrug a shrug away because they want big traps. They probably saw Brock Lesnar a few years ago and went, well, I want to look like that. And then they decide that the trapezius is the same as the shoulders and the same as the deltoid, just because they connect together. 
Well, that's like doing a bunch of leg raises and working uh, leg extensions and working your quads and going, well, I'm sure my hamstrings did something too. And sure, they'll do a little bit, but you're still going to train your hamstrings, so you should probably still train your shoulders. You also then fall into this abyss, I suppose, where you have these massive traps and not big deltoids and you look all winky wonky, and you don't want that either. But these are two different things. This is why most people train their traps on back day. They see it as part of the back, because actually it connects more to your back than it does to your shoulders, or that's also a silly thing to say. But you can do it on shoulders if you want. But it is not the same. You need to train your deltoids, and you need to train your traps. Training your traps doesn't mean you've trained your shoulders. And I, it's, I laugh, but I get it, man. Unless somebody tells you how you're going to educate yourself. But I do see this a lot, and I get a few DMs, and I'm kind of like, man, you're walking down the wrong path. You need to go over there. Number four, we finally get to it. You're going too heavy. We've already mentioned how it can affect other exercises too, but this is the other major one. You're doing shoulder press, right? You're doing dumbbell shoulder press. You're sitting down on a bench and you're going, whoop, 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 and you're doing that as if you're some kind of soldier, apparently. The thing is, you want to go super heavy because you want people to look at you like, wow, and you don't want to ask for anybody's help because sometimes in gyms and fitness palettes of loves, you just want to be left alone. So you take these two massive weights and you lug them up onto your knees and then, oh, you lug one up here and, oh, you lug one up there. And by the time you're ready to lift, you'd use like 25% of your energy, right? Your ATP levels are like, oh man, what have you done to me? And then you're not going to be able to lift as much. Now, if you have somebody helping you out, sure, that's safer anyway. So you can lift a heavy weight, but sometimes it is okay to knock a couple of pounds off, knock a couple of kgs off. Ensure when you get up there, you've still got 95% of your power and just rep it out. Again, when it comes to shoulders and deltoids, in my very humble opinion, I think time under tension and form is way better. I would also argue that for most of your muscle groups, but I think it's especially true when it comes to the deltoid. So if you are not seeing growth, once again, just give it a go. Also, when people do shoulder presses with too much weight, they're not even pushing from their shoulders because they're so off kilter because they can't actually do it. They can't even gauge everything else. And that's not what you want to do. Shoulders are the type of muscles that you want to isolate as much as possible. And when you do do that, eventually they're going to wake up and say hello. And number three is that you forgot there's more than one delt. This happens with biceps too, even though bi stands for two and triceps, even though tri stands for three. You have, we well, have loads of different things in here, but for the sake of what we want to talk about, you have three different deltoid heads that you want to make sure you're working out. First off, you've got your anterior deltoid, right? Now that's at the front. So you can call it the front deltoid. If anybody says, oh, the front deltoid, they're talking about the anterior. Then you've got your posterior delt, which is your rear delt, the one that nobody works. You may at least do some sort of rear uh, laterals or something things otherwise it's going to be a lonely bear and you have the lateral head which is the one in between and you probably know about that one the most because of course you do lateral raises so it stands to reason but what you need to do is see what shoulder exercises you're doing and then go and do your research lateral raises you've got it but what kind of head does the shoulders work what kind of shoulder deltoid am i using when i do a bench press etc etc and then you can actually you know formulate an old shoulder workout where you do have 360 degrees effort and you're not just sort of, you know, prioritizing one over the other. And I know that sounds really boring and you don't have to do it. You can completely ignore this. No one is making you. But for those that are really trying to find that extra one, two percent because they have hit a plateau or they have hit a little bit of an obstacle, I tell you, it massively helps. When you educate yourself and you know what you're doing, all of a sudden something happens between the body and the brain where you're more focused and you're just doing better in the gym. Excuse me, fitness palace of love. Number two is a massive one as well. You're ignoring shoulder pain. If you go to the gym, eventually your shoulder's just gonna hurt, right? It's always gonna be your subscapularis or your supraspinatus tendon. I think the supraspinatus is the one that goes all the time. So surprise, surprise, I went and screwed up my subscapularis. But I saw this guy in the gym the other day. He was a really nice dude and I respected him hugely, but he's trying to train through the pain. And that's why your shoulders don't grow because what happens is you ignore this pain and then you try and work around it. So you think, well, I can do biceps, I can do back, I can do a bit of chest. Obviously I can do legs. And eventually your shoulders are going to suffer. They still need direct stimulus, as all your muscles do. So just understand that shoulder pain is a big deal. Try and be preventative with this. So go get sports massages. Go to your chiropractor. Make sure you're stretching, doing DDP yoga or normal yoga or Pilates, or whatever the hell it is. If you start now, the better you're going to be down the line and the more you are going to protect yourself. Because remember, if you're not healthy, if you're not 100%, you are not going to be able to train in the way you want. But that's why I think a lot of people don't have good shoulders because they're so worried about work them because even when they open a door they're like oh my gosh my deltoid that means something wrong and if it hurts you gotta go see a doctor and number one is always going to be number one until the end of time 
you just ain't training them hard enough. And this could be because you're prioritizing chest and triceps if you are doing a push-pull legs routine, or it could just be you prefer doing chest, so when you get to shoulders, you're going through them too quickly. They need as much intensity and as much dedication and as much devotion and as much ass-kicking as anything else you're going to do. Now, of course, you're probably going to exert more effort when you do a squat, but it needs to be the same mindset. It needs to be the same focus. And when you take that into every single lift that you are doing, that's nine times out of ten where you do see the most benefit. People go, I need to eat more, I need to sleep more, I need to do all of these drugs. I mean, not the last part, but the other two are important. But when it actually comes down to trying to break that muscle down, you've got to break it down as much as you possibly can. So actually sit down, go through all your material, figure out if you are training hard enough. And if you really, really are, it's probably going to be something else on this list. Or maybe it's just your genetics. You don't have good shoulders, you don't have good deltoids, and you're just going to have to suck it up and live with it. Because very sadly, that is the life we lead. There you go. Seven reasons your shoulders aren't growing. And hopefully this helps for a little bit. And in six months to a year down the line, you are going to have those wonderful in Americas. Don't know why I called it that. Also, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the bell ding ding. So you're not if it's going live, there will be a video on the screen. Please do give it a click. Otherwise, grillermind.com for us Simon. Use Simon. Usually get 10% off. At the moment, it's a 12 days Christmas. 20% off. Can't talk. And if you spend $120 or more, you get entered into a free competition for a free prize. Somebody won a Fitbit the other day, a Fitbit 2.0, and they were very happy with this, as you would be. Also, patreon.com for us Simon316 for stuff like that. At Simon316 on Instagram and Twitter. Pro Wrestling Team and Samson Athletics for all my different merchandise. Check it out. You go to Samson Athletics for my fitness tees. New design coming soon. And I've got loads of pro wrestling tees now, so please do check them out. I'm also on Cameo if you want a happy holiday or happy Christmas or happy Hanukkah or happy Kwanzaa message. I like doing those. They're fun. And I believe that's everything. Thank you for spotting by. I appreciate you. And I'll talk to you again soon.